In this video, I'm going to talk about area and perimeter as it pertains to geometry. Okay, so this is just a couple area and perimeter examples I'm going to go through. All right, now, at this point, I'm assuming that we do know uh, what area and perimeter are and how they pertain to either triangles, rectangles, squares, and uh, even... Um, even circles. Uh, I don't think I have any circle examples here, but um, uh, all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, uh, find the perimeter, find the perimeter, and the area of a rectangle with a length. Now, L, sometimes they look like ones, uh, so a uh, this is an italicized L. Length is 15, L is equal to 15, and W is equal to 7. The width is 7 inches. Okay, so now the thing is, this is the rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a simple little picture of what a rectangle is. I got a length of 15 inches and I have a width of 7 inches. All right, so right there, that gives me an idea of what this looks like. Okay, it gives, gives me an idea of what this looks like. This helps me because then what I can do is when I find the perimeter and when I find the area, I can take these numbers set 15 and 7. Do I add them, multiply them, subtract them, divide them? What do I do with them? It just helps me out a little bit. All right, so the perimeter, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to use the formulas. I don't. I don't really like using the formulas for perimeter and area. I just like to either multiply or add whatever it is that I need to do. But uh, for the sake of these examples, I will use the formulas. So in this case, perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W. Now notice the L is italicized for uh, for the problem, but my L that I draw is cursive. The cursive L is very much distinguished uh, different from, uh, from a 1, so that helps us out a little bit. Anyway, so the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width. So in this case, perimeter is going to be equal to two of the lengths. You have two lengths, which is 15, plus two of the widths. Width is seven. So two of the lengths is 30, plus two of the widths is 14. So my perimeter in this case is going to be 44 inches. Don't forget your label there. Now in the past I said make sure to actually answer the question. In this case if you use a capital P is equal to 44 inches. Capital P is commonly referred to as perimeter in most every mathematics book and anywhere you go so this is okay to use capital P for perimeter. That's okay to use because that's commonly what they use for perimeter. What everybody uses for perimeter. Okay so now that we got perimeter down now let's do area. So the area of a rectangle Area is sing, sing, simply, excuse me, area is, is simply length times width. Okay, so I just take the two dimensions. Length is a dimension, width is a dimension. Take the two dimensions and multiply them together. So in this case, area is equal to, use your parentheses here, 15 times 7. So area in this case, let's see if I can do this in my head. Uh, 10 times 7 is 70, and 5 times 7 is 35, so 70 and 35 make 105. So my area is 105 inches squared or square inches. Make sure you distinguish, okay, let me, let me emphasize this here. Make sure you distinguish the difference between area, area, which is square inches, and perimeter, which is just inches. Okay, make sure you distinguish the difference between the two. If you don't put that label there, that doesn't mean you understand the dimensions. Area is the space inside the rectangle. Perimeter is the space around it. To put this a little bit more practically, um, a little bit of a practical example, Area, you can think, okay, if this is a, if this is a yard, this is your front yard, uh, very small, 15 by 7 front yard. Um, but if this is a yard, the area is the grass that's going to be inside of this yard. Okay, that's what area is. Okay, that's why you use square inches, two dimensions here. Perimeter, on the other hand, is going to be the fence that is around the yard. Perimeter is the fence around the yard. Make sure that you use the correct label so you, so you tell me or tell your teachers uh, the correct labeling between inches and inches squared. So you know the difference. You tell them you know the difference between perimeters and areas. Okay, uh, enough of that. On to the next problem. On to this next one. Find the perimeter. Find the perimeter and area of the following figure. You look at this following figure. What is it? It is a triangle. One thing that I believe is missing here, 
One thing that I believe is missing is that this is actually supposed to be a right triangle. I'm going to be very picky with that. This is going to be a right triangle because we can only use our formulas with a right triangle for now. Later on in mathematics, you'll use formulas. Um, you'll use formulas that um, you don't have to have a right triangle, but uh, you'll get there. All right, find the parameter in the area. Actually, I'm going to do area first. It doesn't really matter which one you do first. Green is a horrible color. By the way, green with a white background is a horrible color. Uh, let's just go to, let's just use black, since that's what I have handy. All right, so the area, <clears throat> excuse me, area is equal to, all right, now, so this is a triangle. Area is equal to one-half base times height. One-half base times height. So, again, a little bit of vocabulary. you got to know what the base is. Base, in this case, is going to be 6, and the height is going to be x plus 4. Now, that's a little bit confusing. Why do we have a variable here? We have a variable 5y. We've got a variable here. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Just plug in everything that you know. Okay, a little bit lengthy here. A is equal to 1 half of the base, which is 6, times the height, which is x plus 4. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to simplify it. Okay, I got a lot of things I can multiply together. I'm simply just going to simplify this. Okay, so one thing I know is that half of six, I actually know what that is. That's going to be three. Okay, so I just multiplied there. Half of six is three. And then another thing that I can do, since I have a, um, I'm going to use distributive property, take three times x and three times four. So my area is equal to three x plus twelve. Do I have a label? Do I have a label? Do I have a label? No, I don't. So I'm going to put units squared. My area is 3x plus 12 units squared. That right there, again, is a little bit confusing because normally in mathematics, normally for, for students, you have nice, neat number answers. Well, not really anymore. If you have variable answers, if you have uh, x plus 4, you got that 5x there, sometimes you're not going to get a nice, easy answer. Sometimes you're going to get something like this, which is okay, um, but if you ever figure out what x is going to be or is supposed to be, then... Um, you can plug it in and very quickly find out what the area is going to be. All right, I'm going to do a quick uh, different color here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to do the perimeter. Again, kind of doing this backwards. I did area first. So perimeter in this case, perimeter uh, for a um, for any object is you just add up all the sides. So the perimeter of a uh, of a triangle is you just add up all the sides. Uh, now I believe the formula that we that, that you write down for for many of your books is going to be a plus b plus c, where a, b, and c are the three different sides of the triangle. I mean you don't really need to write that down, um, but I think it's handy to have so that we can see uh, what we're plugging in. So, all right. So the perimeter of a per, of a of a triangle is going to be. Um, I don't know, let's do, this one is A, this one is B, this one is C here, okay, so 6 plus X plus 4 plus 5X, all right, so again, we got a lot of variables in there, but it, it doesn't really matter, we don't know what X is, nor do we have enough information to find out what X is, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave it, we're just gonna add these things together, so i uh, run out of room here on the bottom, go over here to the side, perimeter, is equal to, let's take the x's, add them together. I have six x's, and I have six and ten, six and four, excuse me, make ten. So six x plus ten units, units is my parameter. Okay, and there we go. So again, sometimes you're not going to be able to get a nice, neat, clean answer, um, but that's okay. Um, uh, this this kind of shows you the difference between a nice, neat, clean answer like we got over here with the rectangle and then some kind of messy answers where actually we got variables in there and we don't know all uh, of the information. All right, so hopefully that gives you, uh, it gives you some hints, gives you some tactics and strategies to help you with finding the area and perimeter of, of these different shapes. Uh, again, one thing to reiterate, make sure your units with perimeter... It's always inches or meters or miles, whatever it is. And then with area, you're always inches squared, uh, square miles, square meters, square kilometers, whatever it's going to be. Okay, make sure you know the difference between the two. And even if you don't have any labeling, didn't have any labeling over here, that's okay, but put in your units. Area is going to be whatever units you're using squared. Perimeter is going to be whatever your units you're using. Okay, make sure you put that in so that you tell either myself or your teacher, what's, uh, that, that you know the difference between area and parameter. Now, labeling is very important for these type of problems. Uh, hopefully that helps. 
And that's my video on area and perimeter.